Welcome to this video. Uh, we're just going to be further looking at some more of the flat earth, but first I want to go over one of the major reasons why I believe that the flat earth theory has become very prevalent over the past couple of years. And uh, as we've gone over some verses from the Quran, we can see that the Quran actually speaks about Jesus' death or, or God in Surah 455 speaks about Jesus' death and him being brought up um, to be with God and for God himself to contend against those who, con who contended against the Jesus Christ and the fact that he, he died. And those who are contending against Jesus' death are the Muslims themselves because later on um, the Quran was changed as the, the Muslims talk about the Bible being changed they don't realize that they're on. Uh, Quran has actually been changed multiple times and maximum we've got about 70% of it just now. Um, if any of the Bible has been changed it's be because of the uh, Nestle's text and the other texts that have uh, actually been rejected by the early chucks but they're more prevalent today in Christianity so you have to go to the text as receptus if you want 100% um, truth. And so we're just going to look at this video and it should amaze some people. In what we can only conclude is one of the most bizarre reports ever circulated in the Kremlin, the Ministry of Defense, MOD, is reporting today that the global leader of the Russian Orthodox Church, Patriarch Kirill of Moscow, arrived in Antarctica earlier today where he joined up with the vast Federation naval armada transporting from Saudi Arabia the mysterious Ark of Gabriel, entrusted to Russia's care by the custodian of the two holy mosques, and performed an ancient ritual over it. Read from a secret text given to him by Pope Francis just days prior in Cuba when these leaders of Christianity's two top sects met for the first time in nearly 1,000 years. According to this mod report, and which we had previously reported on in our December 6, 2015 report Russia begins transport of Saudi Arabia's mysterious Ark of Gabriel to Antarctica. The mysterious Ark of Gabriel was first discovered in Mecca on September 12, 2015 by a construction crew tunneling under the Masjid al-Haram Mosque, Grand Mosque, and who, when attempting to unearth it, were all killed by a massive plasma emission that killed a further 107. Even worse, this report continues, on September 24, 2015, during a second attempt to unearth the mysterious Ark of Gabriel, another massive plasma emission killed an estimated 4,000 more people but which Saudi officials blamed on a stampede. Quoting from the original MOD report as to what Saudi officials did next we can read. After the catastrophic death toll involved with the Saudis' second attempt to remove this mysterious device slash weapon, his Holiness Patriarch Kirill was then contacted by the Grand Mosque emissaries in regards to one of the oldest Islamic manuscripts possessed by the Russian Orthodox Church that was saved from the Roman Catholic Crusaders in 1204 when they sacked the Church of Holy Wisdom, now known as Hagia Sophia, in Constantinople, present-day Istanbul, Turkey, titled Gabriel's Instructions to Muhammad Important to note, and virtually unknown in the West, were that the Roman Catholic Crusades, and like they mirror today, were not only against the peoples of Islamic faith, but also against those having Russian Orthodox faith too and why, during these Crusades, the Russian Orthodox Church not only protected their own religious libraries from being destroyed, but also those belonging to Muslims. As to the contents of this ancient Islamic manuscript, Gabriel's instructions to Muhammad, it centers around a group of instructions given to Muhammad by the angel Gabriel in a cave called Hira, located on the mountain called Jabal and Naur, near Mecca, wherein this heavenly being entrusted into Muhammad's care a box slash ark of immense power he was forbidden to use as it belonged to God only and was, instead, to be buried in a shrine at the place of worship the angels used before the creation of man until its future uncovering in the days of Yom al Kaima, or Kiyama which means literally Day of the Resurrection. On December 6, 2015, this report notes, Federation Naval Research Vessel Admiral Vladimirsky departed the Saudi Arabian port of Jeddah with the Ark of Gabriel bound 
bound for Antarctica accompanied by a vast naval armada ordered for its protection by President Putin and that. Okay, it was interesting. I was just going to comment about uh, Resurrection Day because this is what the Muslims contend, of course, about Jesus' death and resurrection. So uh, I think this is um, definitely a lot of truth in this. Strangely, also included capsules with Russian soil to be placed in the areas of military glory and burial sites of Russian sailors at selected ports of call along the long journey to the Southern Ocean. Upon his learning of the grave and global implications associated with this mysterious Ark of Gabriel, this report continues. Pope Francis contacted Patriarch Kirill requesting an urgent and immediate meeting while warning that the end is near after which Patriarch Kirill agreed to meet the Roman Catholic Church leader in Cuba on February 12, an historic meeting between these two leaders that had not taken place between these Church's leaders in nearly 1,000 years. Though the exact nature of the talks between Patriarch Kirill and Pope Francis remain classified at much higher level than we're granted access to. Mod analysts in this report do state that an ancient secret manuscript was given to Patriarch Kirill by Pope Francis that pertains to the Ark of Gabriel whose legend behind it claims it was written directly by the Watchers, Angels, described in the Book of Enoch. And just hours ago, this report concludes, Patriarch Kirill, while using this secret text given to him by Pope Francis, preformed an ancient ritual over the Ark of Gabriel in the Russian Orthodox Holy Trinity Church the only church in Antarctica, and where immediately thereafter this mysterious artifact was transported into the vast interior of this cold and foreboding continent by a highly specialized Spetsnaz, special forces, unit to a destination, and purpose, not identified by the mod. Okay, so, uh, yeah, it's explaining, I believe, um, you know, what's Besides the inner earth and besides Admiral Byrd speaking of a continent beyond um, Antarctica, Antarctica, that's the words that he used. And so either we've got an inner earth, we've got uh, a hollow earth, we've got an inner earth where you've got temperatures um, rising up until uh, about the 60s or the mid 70s as, as uh, Admiral Byrd actually experienced. Um, and you know the last video I posted um, was from a Latter Day Saint who who died, who didn't actually make the journey to the North Pole to get to the other entrance of the, the Hollow Earth. Um, but what he said was that yes, there was uh, conditions there which uh, could could easily easily support life, and that gradually curves right into the Earth. There's there's a hole. At both of the poles and uh, the temperature increases <clears throat> so very interesting and then you've got this into the, the mix obviously we don't really know if um, the, this mysterious Ark of Gabriel was was at all with the, the Russian forces I mean, you know I, I could speculate that um, if, if it killed um, all these Muslims then then why is it now in Christian hands is it only because um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say that the Pope is a Christian, but certainly um, we know that Russia is standing up for um, biblical issues, and maybe at, at this moment God is favouring Russia because they've rejected the gay marriage laws and different other things. So it's possible that God allowed the Russians to to uh, take this ark somewhere. It's possible. The Book of the Courses of the Heaven, the relations of each, according to their classes, their dominion, and their seasons. And so uh, it's said that the Pope gave the Russian Orthodox leader a manuscript um, that was related to or from the Book of Enoch, but uh, at the moment we have the Oxford Press edition of the Book of Enoch, which was discovered by a Scotsman about just after they had the King James Bible, but it's in the King James Bible Apocrypha now, the Book of Enoch, and I do hold some credence to it. Um, you know, if I'm telling you that there's some things in the Quran that uh, speak, speak about Jesus that could be perceived as being true because they don't contradict what we have in the Bible, then there's truths in this book as well.
you know, so you can't just discount these um, ancient books. It's probably the most ancient piece of manuscript scripture in the world, the Book of Enoch. According to their names and places of origin, and according to their months, which Uriel, the holy angel, who is with me, who is their guide, showed me. And he showed me all their laws exactly as they are, and how it is with regard to all the years of the world, and unto eternity, till the new creation is accomplished, which dureth till eternity. And this is the first law of the luminaries. The luminary, the sun, has its rising in the eastern portals of the heaven, and its setting in the western portals of the heaven. Now, this is, this is, uh, this is good, I and mean, this is fine. But what seems to happen is that they have a rotating ceiling of stars and uh, where even the sun and the moon are spun around the earth like a wheel. And uh, for me, as you can see here, if the sun is rising in the east, which I'm not even sure on this map that, that if it is the east, I mean, if this is Africa and Russia, the east would be over here, it wouldn't be up there, that's the north, you see. So this isn't accurate. And there's so many um, misaccuracies, you know, that, 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 that are in a lot of these models about the flat earth, and this is why either it's done deliberately so you can't get your head around the theory, or the flat earth is just a complete lie and it's a diversion. Um, to stop people uh, saying that there is a South Pole, okay, it's, it's, it's just it's just came out the past couple of years when all these events have been happening, and they don't want people to believe there is a South Pole. They want you to believe that there's a wall of ice around here that you can't you can't get past, which is not in the Bible, um, and uh, Admiral Byrd and many other people, government officials, especially, you know, the the, the Germans, the Nazis had bases there before the Second World War, and uh, yes, so this is the east, so in this model they've got the sun coming up here, but the thing is that there's a wheel here and it spins round and then sets, so, so in the sky this doesn't happen, you can't observe the sun rising and then hitting a wheel and then spinning round this direction and then until it gets to here and then just setting there. That's not what happens. And I would speculate that if, if the flat earth model is correct, what you would have here is a roulette type wheel of the flat earth, um, where you've got the sun and moon, just like uh, the silver ball that's used in you know, the roulette wheel. And, and it's the earth itself that spins round. I hear all the flat earthers say, well, how, ca how can the round earth be, be going around the sun at 60 odd thousand miles an hour and how can it be spinning around at uh, several thousand miles an hour? Well I think the only concept that would work here is if it was a flat earth and it actually spun around as well and, and this would give the effect that the stars are moving. I think the stars are, well, let's just, let's just further see what this video has to say. And I saw six portals in which the sun rises, and six portals in which the sun sets, and the moon rises, and sets in these portals. And the leaders of the stars and those whom they lead, six in the east and six in the west, Is it spinning wheel and all wheel? following each other in accurately corresponding order. Also, many windows to the right and left of these portals. And first there goes... So, so you've got the dome here, and then you've also got a spinning, a spinning dome, a spinning wheel dome. I mean... You know, they say that this is simple. This is simpler than the, the round off. But to me, this is absolutely very, very, very complicated indeed way to look at things. I'm not saying again, I can't, no one can see with, with absolute um, certainty what shape the earth is and all of that. But this is not as simple as, as, the, as the spherical earth in the model we have just now. It's just not as simple as the, it's portrayed by the flat earthers. Goes forth the great luminary in the sun, and his circumference is like the circumference of the heaven, and he is quite filled with illuminating and heating fire. The chariot on which he ascends, the wind drives, and the sun goes down from the heaven and returns through the north in order to reach the east. So what he's saying is that, again, when the, the sun rises here from the supposed east, 
and you've got um, this chari here which sort of catches the sun here I, I suppose the sun's meant to sit in this little uh, the little uh, holder this little platform here and so that the chariot just carries the, the sun around it and then it just it'll probably just empty it out down down the west and that's it setting again what happens after that maybe it's like a pinball machine and it just go, goes in here and then comes back up again like a pinball machine that's that's the model that they're, they're presenting to people east and is so guided that he comes to the appropriate portal and shines in the face of the heaven in this way he rises in the first month in the great portal which is the fourth those six portals in the east and again i'm not knocking this i believe all of this is validity but it's how you interpret it um we are at the age of interpretation i believe because there's so much disinformation out there so it's very important how we interpret everything a lot of people's ears and hearts are hard and closed towards truth and uh you know this channel is about yes it's uncovering truth and it's about discussing truth um, and if people are man enough to, to do that, then uh, or, or woman enough to do that, then fine. But uh, a lot of you are just like scared little mice and are basically what Jesus said, you're like sheep. You know, if, if there's someone, some channel or some video that's got a lot of hits, you'll thumbs it up and you'll say, that's wonderful, that's great. And you'll go back to your life, not even thinking about what you've just seen. So, you know. And in that fourth portal from which the sun rises in the first month are 12 window openings from which proceed a flame when they are opened in their season. When the sun rises in the heaven, he comes forth through that fourth portal 30 mornings in succession and sets accurately in the fourth portal in the west of the heaven. And during this period, the day becomes longer and the night nightly shorter to the 30th morning. On that day, the sun is longer than the night by a ninth part and the day amounts exactly to 10 parts, and the night to 8 parts. And the sun rises from that fourth portal, and the day becomes 12 parts, and the night is shortened and becomes 6 parts, and the sun mounts up to make the day shorter and the night longer. And the sun returns. Okay, so did they say that also the, the sun and the moon and so on can get nearer the earth, <laughs> and can get more far away from the earth and we can observe that of course in the spherical earth model but again they don't they tell you how this uh, dome which seems to be a set shape can uh, detract it seems to be a set shape I mean if you've got one of these glass shakers it's impossible to press the the dome uh, further towards the, the flat surface or it's impossible to prise the dome away from the top of otherwise you'll break it so this is a very complicated model I mean they're saying it's easier to understand no it's not easier to understand to the east and enters into the sixth portal and rises from it and sets 30 mornings and when 30 mornings are accomplished the day decreases by exactly one part and becomes 11 parts and then and the sun goes forth from that fifth portal and sets in the fifth portal of the west. All right, so they're seeing this, this uh, different levels here. I see this. So instead of the equinoxes, that they've got different levels going up, going up, up and down, according to the the, the season or the time of year. Which to me, again, um, you see, if this is the sun, and uh, it's going around in a circle like this, then at night time, in the other side of the world, you should be able to see the sun as a star but this has never ever been observed in his, the history of, of, of man ever with, with you know because, but that's the model that they're, su they're suggesting you know it's still to be proven that's what i'm saying to flat earthers it's all very well anybody can pull a model out of anywhere and say that this is this is god's uh model but it's got to be scrutinized it's got to be tried and tested and at the moment it's, it's uh, it doesn't add up Okay, that's what I'm saying. Rises in the fourth portal for one in thirty mornings, on account of its sign, and sets in the west. On that day, the day is equalized with the night, and becomes of equal length, and the night amounts to nine parts, and the day to nine parts. And the sun rises from that portal, and his return as often as he returns sixty times and rises, the great luminary which is named the sun forever so and ever. Yang and yang. 
and that which thus rises. And this, this, this to me is like the roulette wheel. Um, this, this to me, I would look more into this, the, the, the flat earth is spinning. Um, I think that's a possibility. Um, because it would make, I think it would make a smoother transition uh, between the sun and the moon, and it wouldn't be changing directions as, as it is in this model. You know, you've got it rising up and then hitting this wheel at the top and then going round the arc of the, the top of the world, which no one has, has observed the sun, you know, rising up in one direction, going north, and then just suddenly taking off um, west somewhere or east. I mean, it's nobody's seen that, you know. It's the great luminary, and is so named according to its appearance, according as the Lord commanded. As he rises, so he sets, and decreases not. And, and again, all the flower models seem to be two-dimensional, like we're little two-dimensional cardboard people down in the earth and uh, everything's two dimensions. We know we live in a three-dimensional world, you know, and, and physics explains that there's many multiple different dimensions, four, fifth, six dimensions, um, and so on, um, which isn't explained in a flower model. None of this is explained in their models because it doesn't cater for uh, real physics. If you're a physician, I think that the flat earth model is instantly just just debunked, um, especially if you're into physics and, and you, you can explain uh, the different dimensions. And rests not, but runs day and night, and his light is sevenfold brighter than that of the moon. But as regards size, they are both equal. And after this law, I saw another law dealing with the smaller luminary, which is named the moon. And her circumference is like the circumference of the heaven. And her chariot in which she rides is driven by the wind. And light is given to her in definite measure. And her rising and setting change every month. And her days are like the days of the sun. And when her light is uniform, it amounts to the seventh part of the light of the sun. And thus she rises. And her first phase in the east comes forth on the 30th morning. And on that day she becomes... Okay, let's uh, just play this part again. Uh, something that I just picked up on there. And after this law, I saw another law dealing with the smaller luminary, which is named the moon. And her circumference is like the circumference of the heaven. And her chariot in which she rides is driven by the wind. And light is given to her in depth. And light is given to her. So uh, again, flat earthers will say, well, you got up the flat earth because, um, you know, it says in the Bible that uh, the moon emits its own light, but it says here in the book of Enoch that uh, light is given to, to her. That's why it's called the feminine, because it doesn't produce its own light, okay? The masculine is the, the sun, just like, uh, you know, that you can't, basically have life without the man, you know, um, type of thing. But, um, so, obviously in the present model, um, we have the, the light um, of the sun giving, uh, giving light to the moon, and it's different phases, that's the present understanding, but what a lot of flat earthers are saying is that uh, the moon produces its own light, and, and it's, you know, but that's not what it said. Let me just play that again. And the moon, and her circumference is like the circumference of the heaven. The area in which she rides is driven by the wind, and light is given to her in definite measure. Light is given to her in and her rising and setting change every month, and her days Damn. are like the days of the sun. You got morning. the moon phases here, and on that which day constitute, of course, the uh, new moons and sabbaths, which are spoken of right here. She becomes Richard. visible and constitutes for you the first phase of the moon on the thirtieth day together with the sun in the portal where the sun rises. And the one half of her goes forth by a seventh part, and her whole circumference is empty, without light, with the exception of one seventh part of it, the fourteenth part of her light. And when she receives one seventh part of the half of her light, her light amounts to one seventh part and the half thereof, and she sets with the sun, and when the sun rises, the moon rises with him and receives the half of one part of light, and in that night, in the beginning of her morning, in right. the commencement of the lunar day. Well, in this model, anyway, they're saying the moon receives its light from the sun. So that's 
this is obviously a flat earther that's agreeing with uh, the present um, conclusion, um, which is which is good. The moon sets with the sun and is invisible that night with the fourteen parts and the half of one of them, and she rises on that day with exactly a seventh part and comes forth and recedes from the rising of the sun, and in her remaining days she becomes bright in the remaining thirteen parts. And I saw another course, a law for her, and how according to that law she performs her monthly revolution. And all these Uriel, the holy angel, who is the leader of them all, showed to me, and their positions. And I wrote down their positions as he showed them to me. And I wrote down their months as they were, and the appearance of their lights till fifteen days were accomplished. Okay, so fifteen days um, is when we have the full moon. Every single moon, usually there's twelve of them. On a leap year, sometimes 13, which is explained in this video. I'll leave a link to these videos, by the way, in the toolbar. But um, there are some lunar Sabbath keepers which keep keep the the uh, Sabbath on the 14th, but I keep on the 15th. Is uh, you know, I did pray about it and asked the Lord that someone would would teach me about it, and uh, you know, I, I did go to uh, Carolina and meet this chap who, who knew quite a lot about it so yeah we have it on the 15th um and and uh i guess the present solar lunar calendar that i've done will be coming to an end in a, in a few months but uh again it's quite an easy thing to pick up uh, i think there's a lot of information um about it just now so uh Hallelujah. If there's any of you in the UK want to start a Lunar Sabbath group, by all means let me know and uh, we can do something. Their laws and all their plagues and all their benefactions have I shown to thee, my son, Methuselah. And the first quarter is called the East because it is the first. And the second, the South, because the Most High will descend there. Yay. So that is kind of like a stroke wheel. Uh, so not a stroke wheel. Um, it's, it's like a roulette wheel there. <laughs> I don't know what that's meant to be. Is it the North Star or something? I'm not sure, but the Earth is kind of like a roulette wheel in that model. There, in quite a special sense, will he who is blessed forever descend. And the West Quarter is named the Diminished, because there are all the luminaries of the heaven wane and go down. Ace of the heaven. Okay, so uh, again, flat say, you know, how can the earth be round if it if it says in the Bible that the earth is a face? Well, have you ever seen a flat face? I mean, you, your your actual head is round, you know. So don't don't be don't be deceived by these sayings. Again, um, you know, very well could could still possibly be a flat earth, but not according to these types of models and. Uh, Again, the wisdom is just just doesn't answer a lot of questions for me. Okay, so this is a model of the inner earth here, saying that you know the Giza pyramid has entrances into the inner earth, different places, Italy, um, different places. They might they might call them portals, or they're just tunnels that you can literally go down. And I believe there's even one at the Vatican as well. Um, that goes several miles into the earth and so uh, the Vatican itself may be sitting at one of these uh, tunnels or entrances or portals to the inner earth I wouldn't be surprised uh, if, if it was and uh, we know that uh, this central sun could well itself be uh, the lake of fire um, you know, um, which at the moment is empty because it's, it's actually been created for Satan and the fallen angels. So they've not actually been cast into the, the lake of fire yet. But what we do have around this these parts is hell, which is, is, is different cells, different places where when a person dies, their soul goes here if they've not repented, if they don't know Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus Christ himself said that I'm going to the heart of the earth just like Jonah was in the whale for three days and three nights, the Son of Man shall be in the heart of the earth. And so, uh, do I believe Jesus went to hell? I believe there was a part where the, the righteous souls went to, which was called Abraham's bosom. 
Um, I think that he also gave the souls in hell a chance to repent and follow him to heaven, which a lot of them uh, were so hateful and spiteful against God that they actually uh, rejected that. So it takes quite a lot of hate uh, towards God to actually uh, reject an offer of, of eternal life. Um, and to be with God, of course, it, it, it takes a lot of hate to do that. But um, this is why we, we, we must always uh, forgive our enemies. We must always show forgiveness towards those who, who lie about us and who mistreat us. Um, so that this sh Shambhala um, is, is what this inner earth is called. There's various cities meant to be within there. I do believe that there are probably a lot of Nephilim large giant tribes in there. Um, I don't think a lot of humans would survive in there. I think it's very hostile towards humans. You know, if there is such a thing as the reptilians, I'm quite certain that they're down there somewhere, probably, probably around this area, you know, <laughs> as you can see. But we'll look at a model of the flat earth so that you don't think I'm being biased. And we'll look at their model of uh, different uh, worlds out there. And you can just briefly see. Admiral Bart's flight going into the entrance in the North Pole here and then you've got a similar entrance here in the South Pole which is probably connected with the, the pyramid that's there and, and different other things there. He, here's an example of what Flat Earthers see when you, when you go to, around here and uh, well this, this should be closed off but it's just an example of, there's, there's not many examples of it to be honest with you I mean I think there's just so many problems with the flat earth theory that there's so many different models of the flat earth that uh, you know they haven't really come to a conclusion yet. This is one of them. The other one with the dome around the outside, so you won't be able to get out into other worlds, other where you know there's maybe angels here, as there's people speculate that live here, or this is heaven, um, and maybe the only way to get through is. One speculated is um, through one of these pyramids, there might be a portal to go underneath the dome or something and then come out here into these other worlds. And so this is a sort of a model here, um, which none of them, to my mind, are remotely accurate. I mean, look, there's another one. Um, okay, it's quite a well-known one here. Um, just so many of them to be honest with you I mean so yeah you know I've yet to see um, a correct model of the flat earth but I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it was enlightening for you and may the Lord bless you